Okay, you guys, we're doing a flash design on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Uh, we're using Arches, the one and only. Um, this is from the block. As you can see, I've started this on the coarse, rough side of the block, but the back side of the paper on the block is a little bit smoother and it is a little bit easier to nib on if you want to try your fancy at that. I just happen to do it on the rougher side just because it's a little bit more difficult um, just for the purpose of the video. And uh, so we'll go ahead and, and, and do it. You can see I've got the design that we're gonna do um, prepped on there with a red Ticonderoga pencil. It doesn't smear, but it, it can erase. Um, it is kind of waxy. So I'm gonna, this is the first time I've tried doing the red pencil. Um, it might impede the black pigment from absorbing into the paper a little bit. So I might even kind of erase it a little bit before I start just to get it a little bit lighter. Um, and then I've got my B5 nib here. Uh, and then we're using Higgins Black Magic. Um, and then I've got Windsor Newton watercolor. And then I've got, we're going to do a little bit of red too. And the red is uh, a different brand, but um, we'll get into that later. Okay, so I've got some of the red knocked off there. Um, usually when I'm nibbing paintings like this, I will use a light table. But for the sake of the video, um, it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing if I don't have light coming from underneath, making everything on top like a shadow. So uh, first I think we'll talk a little bit just about how these types of nibs work. Um, you can see the tip of it is flat. So what you want to do is have that flat part of the tip running parallel with the paper. So the angle that you're going to be having is going to be like that. And then when you push, it's kind of springy like that. And so using that pressure causes the tip, which has like a little slit going down the middle of it, it causes those two pieces to kind of spread out like that. So when you're pushing and then you're pulling a line, those pieces spread out and then it's depositing, the ink is, is able to flow. Um, when you're using cold press watercolor paper, the biggest problem you're gonna run into if you've tried it is the tip of this thing as it spreads is gonna catch and snag on the paper. So really the only way to avoid that is to try to move the nib in a back direction for all your lines. Some people will kind of hold it backwards like this and they'll kind of nib like that. Um, I kind of just go like this as much as I can. I'll go sideways like sometimes a little bit, you know, if I have to, but I'm being really careful and I'm working to try to get it to not catch on the paper as much as I can. To be honest, I've been using uh, hot press paper for most of the paintings I've been doing, but I just wanted to do a cold press one just to show um, somebody that likes painting on that, you know, maybe something that you had, maybe a trick or something that you don't know uh, or whatever. Um, anything that I can help with, I'm happy to help. So, all right, let's get um, the super zoom going on here and then we'll start nibbing this. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, like work this way with it because if I start nibbing here and I'm working this way, my hand is gonna get all over it and it's you're gonna run into getting little handprints all over the painting. So I'm gonna start at the top left corner because I'm right-handed and I'm gonna start working my way down this way. So I've loaded up some ink on here. Let's see if I can, about that much on the front. That's about how much I got on the back. And then I kind of like dab off to the side just to make sure there's not too much on there when I when I first go ahead and start doing lines. And I'm even I'm going to kind of start this one a little bit sideways, see how it goes. Cool. Just touch that part up piece of the paper so as you can see lining with the nib on cold press paper 
is pretty much really challenging and is not the cleanest option when it comes to like using a smoother paper. So if you really want to have like the crispiest, smoothest lines possible, maybe hot press is better. But it does kind of have a cool look. Let me see. you can see these lines are healed in the paper. Um, you know, they're not perfect, but it does look cool. And when I am doing designs, it kind of helps me to like if possible, like with the skull design here, I've made some of the lines. The lines are, are kind of like jagged almost. So it's like when I'm pulling lines with a nib, it's a little bit easier. And I'm not the best nibber or painter or whatever. Just trying to show a little bit of what I know. So doing more straight kind of angled lines with it is a little bit easier. You know, doing lines like like these longer ones is, is where it's gonna be a challenge and that's where I'm gonna really make sure the direction of that nib is, is going, you know, with the grain of that. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be doing a line like this one sideways at all. Okay, we kind of zoomed out a little bit. It helps sometimes to rotate the paper, get the right angle. And as you kind of start lining, you kind of learn what, what the right pressure is going to be. I haven't outlined a painting in a while. I've just been tattooing and drawing. So even the first couple lines on this thing for me were kind of exploratory. So the whole time I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep that circle on the tip of the nib flat on the paper, especially when I'm going those like sideways looking lines. Those sideways looking lines are, are really where you're going to run into trouble. Man, I keep having technical problems with my phone recording this video. Um, I'm going to do like a little bit more of a zoomed out view just so you can kind of see um, just overall how I'm doing this, um, loading up the, the nib and all that. So anyways, back to what I was doing. So I'm going to pull this kind of long straight line here. And so I'm going to make sure I'm, I got the angle right and I got the tip flat. I'm like running dry. And I kind of like designed this so the lines aren't perfectly straight, you know, it's got a little bit of funk to it. 
and it definitely makes it easier to line out when everything isn't totally perfect. And it looks good too. So now I can kind of push a line away from myself. Like that. Push these guys. Just got to make sure that the tip of that thing stays flat. And you got to expect the paper to catch and snag on that thing. Now I'm starting to run a little dry again. I kind of place the tip down, I get the pressure, and then I pull the line. So if you see, I'm always leading with this back part, this back corner, I'm leading with that. I try at least to have that be the direction that I'm pulling the lines in. The nib works a lot better if it's going in the right direction and if the tip is flat. I'm starting to get kind of all over the place here. For me, it's easier to pull circular lines this way versus this way. So I'm gonna just kind of make sure that nothing is too wet that I'm gonna get my hand in. I see this piece right here is a little bit wet, but I'm gonna turn this piece this way. You can also use like a piece of trait, you know, a piece of paper or something like that to put your hand on top of if you're worried about it. But I'm not super worried about it. And you can see how starting out sideways it like doesn't really want to pull a nice line. Now I'm pulling in the right direction, so it lays really nice. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. Stop right there, just because that's where my fingers kind of naturally stopped. I'm not gonna force it. And right now I'm going totally sideways. So I'm just gonna stop because I don't want that to catch and start skipping. I'll bring the angle a little bit more in my favor. Go ahead and connect it right there. Try to keep it flat.
Cool. There you have it. All done. Okay, everybody, we're getting ready to paint here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my paints laid out. As you can see, I don't really clean my paint tray very good, so it's got some dried paint on there, but uh, this is, what kind is this? M. Graham & Co. Watercolor from the tube. That's probably way too much for what I'm gonna use today. but these do rehydrate. So a lot of times I'll just leave the glob sitting on there and I'll just kind of wet it down again when I want to paint with it. All right, now we got Windsor Newton black. This is the lamp black. Got some dried on there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a new glob right here. and get that cap back on. Don't want your paints drying out, They're expensive. Okay, now here I've got my, let's see, number four filbert tip. It's curved. All the paint is worn off because I hold it in my mouth when I paint with it, like that. And then uh, a liner, I've also got a number four liner. That's what I'm gonna use to fill it in. Okay, so now we're gonna need to hydrate our paints that we have over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush in the water here. Find a cleanish spot. All right, so I got a ton of water on the brush. I don't want there to be a ton of water on the brush when I'm painting. So I'm going to thicken it up with the paint because I don't want like a big bead of paint on the paper. All right. Let me see here. I know this is going to be solid black, so let's just go ahead and paint this in. Painting the solid parts first is a good way to kind of test to see like how the viscosity of your paint is doing. Before I go any further on this, I'm going to grab my reference because I did a drawing of this as a study beforehand. <clears throat> okay, um, so I don't have the reference, but I just looked at a picture of it real quick. So, go ahead and get some water on the brush. You want the brush to be wet, but not like too crazy. there's too much water to the black ratio, it's gonna look gray when it dries on the page. So I get it mostly black, but just watery enough that it, it, it paints smoother. Let's get way zoomed in. All right, I'm gonna run the fade here. A little bit of water on the brush, but not that much. I'm gonna zoom out. Clean the brush. Before this is dry, go back in one more time. Clean the brush one more time. Polish up that edge. Got yourself a fade. I'm gonna do, let's see. A little bit of black right there. Zoom in on this. Clean 
clean brush. Back and forth. Cleaning the brush, wiping it down. I don't use my spit, but I do hold the brush in my mouth and I kind of lick the brush to, and that tells me how much water is on the shading brush. Right now I do have a little bit of spit on the brush. And so you kind of have to experiment with like how much water versus how dry the brush needs to be to get the desired result. You never want to, let me zoom out again here. You never want to push a fade. You always want the brush to be going back like that. So I'm gonna turn the paper. There we go. Like so. All right, I'm gonna continue to run through this here and I'm just gonna leave it zoomed out so you can see when I'm, I'm cleaning, when I'm reloading the brush and kind of all that. And I'm just gonna kind of start cruising through this thing. When you're filling something in, it helps to kind of do the edges first. And then fill it in. That way it's less likely to go over the edge. But it's up to you. You can see the brush is getting a little dry. See the texture of the paper, so I'm gonna get a little water. But you don't want too much water, like I said, because otherwise this will be not black when it dries. And if you do tattoos, it's kind of like when a tattoo is fresh versus when a tattoo is healed is the kind of way that I like to look at it in my mind. One of my buddies has his brushes taped like that and he just flips them. But I keep this one in my mouth. So I just put a little bit of black and then I just pull it out. It's that easy. I love painting because it's like instant gratification. I can paint a lot faster than I tattoo or draw.
I thought about just doing a time lapse of all of this, but I think that that would take away from the educational value because if you don't really know other people that paint, um, that you can paint with that are better at painting than you, you can just watch this. And I'm not even really that good at painting, but maybe I know some things that people would appreciate learning. Kind of weird painting with the camera right next to my face. Because normally I'm like getting all, of, all, all over everything. I guess it helps my posture. There I go, breaking my own rule. Don't push fades, but... Some rules can be bent. Yep. You can even kind of erase, like that looks a little dark, a little heavy. So I'm gonna kind of push it back into itself and kind of take some away, clean the brush. That's better. The brush with the black on it is like almost dry right now. but it's putting down like enough black. It's 
starting to look cool. Getting a little dry there. Need some more black. I want this part to be really solid black. So make sure it's nice and saturated black. The more water you have, the easier it's gonna fade out. But if you have too much, it's just gonna make a big puddle and it's gonna suck. You can pretty much just put fades anywhere you want. That's what makes it fun. That's my favorite part about traditional style is the, the gradiencies or like eye candy. Make sure I'm not putting my hand in anything wet. A little too dry. There we go. And remember to leave enough heavy black at the start of the fade, you know? Because you don't want you don't want it to just be gray necessarily. You still want to have some of that solid black up in there. I'm going to go back into this one and make this one a little bit more black, just like I was talking about.
Cool, man. Maybe like a little gray over the teeth. A little depth. This line is like almost, like I usually let the lines dry for like a day. But since they're like, you can kind of just fade the line, which can be not ideal if you're not trying to have that happen to you. I'm gonna call that good. Maybe a little bit right here. Cool, all right, now I'm gonna go hit up the red. Giant glob of red. Just pick some up on the brush. I want it to be too wet. Let's see, we're gonna put red right here. Maybe a little bit more red down there. some more accidentally got some black in it So that's kind of what's nice about liquid acrylics is it's not going to rehydrate back into itself super easily like that. So if you touch the colors to each other, they're not going to smear.
I tend to paint kind of crazy. Some people are like really disciplined of just moving their hands super slow. And I'll do that, you know, when it really counts. But I don't know. I kind of like tossing my hand around. Cool, man. I'm going to I'm gonna call that good. There she is. Sweet. That looks sick. That was hella fun. Cool. That's what it's all about. Having fun. Make sure to clean your brushes. Don't leave them in the cup like that. Like they tell you in art class. Alright. And there you have it. Watercolor painting on 140 pound cold press arches paper from the block. It's got a little bit of shine to it right now. Sometimes if you get that the black really thick on the brush, there's not enough water. That's like right where I started, you know. A little shiny there. A couple spots on the wolf. But I think it looks good. I'm happy with it. Thanks, everybody.